Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson we're going to discuss acid-base reactions, or what are more commonly referred to as neutralization reactions. Now, neutralization reactions are basically just a specialized type of double displacement reactions, and they work the same way in terms of exchanging anion partners to form new products. So if you haven't yet watched that lesson on double displacement reactions, I suggest you watch that first. Now again, basically an acid-base reaction is just a specialized type of double displacement. It's just that our two reactants, one is always an acid, and the other one is always a base. Now there are actually several different types of bases, but the most common type of base that we're going to refer to are metal hydroxides. So if you see OH combined with some kind of metal cation, you can be sure that's going to be a base. Well, since we have our hydrogen from the acid, and our hydroxide from the base, those always combine to give us water. Because as we saw in our lesson on balancing, hydrogen combines with hydroxide, which is the same thing as H2O. Well, the other product you always get is some kind of an ionic compound, or the more generic term for an ionic compound is a salt. So the cation from the base will always combine with the anion from the acid to produce an ionic compound. So again, the general format for a neutralization reaction or acid-base reaction is always an acid plus a base gives some kind of salt or ionic compound and water. So you will always see water and an ionic compound as your products. So let's just try a few of these as examples. Phosphoric acid neutralizes a potassium hydroxide solution. Well, we know from our lesson on naming acids that ic acid means the anion came from eight so this would have come from phosphate, and phosphate is PO4, three negative. Well, to make that an acid, we combine it with H+, so phosphoric acid would be H3PO4. And we learn that acids are generally soluble, so aqueous. Well, that neutralizes potassium hydroxide. Well, potassium is K positive, hydroxide is OH negative, so those will just combine to be KOH. And as we know from our solubility rules, which again, if you don't have a copy of those, those are available on getchemistryhelp.com as a PDF. All potassium containing compounds are soluble, so this would be aqueous. Well, what would our products be? Well again, just like any double displacement reaction, we're just going to trade off anions. So hydrogen was with phosphate, now hydrogen ion will go with hydroxide. Well, we said hydrogen with hydroxide is the same thing as H2O. And water is always going to be written as a pure liquid, not aqueous, because it's not water dissolved in water, it's just pure liquid water. Well, the other product is going to be our salt, or our ionic compound. So in this case, potassium reacts with phosphate, to make K3PO4. Well, the last step is always to check and make sure the reaction is balanced. So we have three hydrogens on the left-hand side, one hydrogen on the right-hand side, because remember from our lesson on balancing, if you have hydrogen and hydroxide on one side and water on the other, balance the hydrogens and hydroxide separately from the hydrogens in the acid. So three hydrogens in the acid, one hydrogen in the water. So this needs to become three, or three waters. Well, that now makes three hydroxides. So the potassium hydroxide needs to become three. Well, that then makes three potassiums. And the products also have three potassiums. There's one phosphate, and the reactants had a phosphate. So that reaction is balanced. Number two says hydrobromic acid neutralizes a calcium hydroxide solution. Well, we learned from our lesson on naming acids that when you see hydro on the front and ic acid on the end, that must mean that the root anion ended in ide. So hydrobromic acid must have come from bromide. Well, what's bromide? Well, bromide is Br negative. If we're going to make that an acid and combine it with hydrogen ion, hydrobromic acid must be HBr, of course aqueous because it's an acid neutralizes calcium hydroxide. Well, calcium is Ca2 positive, hydroxide, OH negative. So to make that a neutral compound, we would have calcium with two hydroxides. 
and that's a solution, so aqueous. How about our products? Well, again, any acid-base reaction, we're always going to get an ionic compound and water. So we can see, again, the water comes from the hydrogen combining with the hydroxide. So that makes our water, which will be liquid. Again, you can think of that as hydrogen with hydroxide, just like that. Well, the ionic compound, or salt, would be calcium combining with bromide. So, calcium bromide. And if you look on your solubility rules, you see that all bromides are aqueous, except for silver, mercury 1, and lead 2. And calcium is not any of those, so this would be aqueous. Our last step would be to balance it. Well, again, remember, when you're balancing a reaction that has hydrogen and hydroxide on one side and water on the other, treat the hydrogens and the hydroxide separately from the hydrogens in the acid. So one hydrogen on the reactants, one hydrogen on the product one bromide in the reactants, two bromides in the products. So this needs to become two bromides. Well, that now makes two hydrogens. We need to make this two hydrogens. Well, now that makes two hydroxides. So this has to become two hydroxides. Oh, and it already is. And then we have one calcium and one calcium. So this is balanced. So two hydrobromic acids react with one calcium hydroxide to make two waters and one calcium bromide. And our third and final example says sulfurous acid neutralizes a lithium hydroxide solution. Well, us acid, we know that means the root anion must have ended in ite. So sulfurous must have come from sulfite. Sulfite is SO3, 2 negative. If I combine that with H plus to make it an acid, sulfurous acid must be H2SO3 and then aqueous. That neutralizes lithium hydroxide. So lithium is Li positive, hydroxide OH negative. So lithium hydroxide must be LiOH. And it's a solution, aqueous, because all lithium containing compounds are aqueous or soluble. So let's swap our anions. So let's put hydrogen with hydroxide and lithium with sulfite. So hydrogen and hydroxide is water, which is liquid. Lithium with sulfite would be Li2SO3. And all lithium containing compounds are soluble, so this would be aqueous. Last step as always, check to make sure it's balanced. So we have two hydrogens on the left. Remember water is hydrogen with hydroxide. So we really only have one hydrogen on the right, so we need to make this two, so two waters. Now that makes two hydroxides also. So lithium hydroxide needs to have two. Now that makes two lithiums, and we already had two lithiums. One sulfite and one sulfite. So that reaction is balanced. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson on neutralization reactions. If you did, click on that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down below. And we'll see you next time back here at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.